All right, everyone, we are back for part two of project management in food manufacturing. And again, this is aligned with our course in um, product and process engineering uh, in the third year of the culinary innovation program. And so in the first part of this video series, we talked about a big overview about project management and its role in food science and food technology applications. And Right now we're going to do part two. We're going to walk through a sample of a project plan. And so if you remember, there were different phases and we are going to be looking at the initiation phase of uh, project management. So at the end of this video, you will be able to define a project and its core attributes. You'll be able to compose a description of a project that you are working on, complete a task list for completing the project, estimate time required for each task in the list, and identify outcomes or deliverables for each of the tasks. So. Just a reminder, in the initiation phase of a project, you are looking at that initial ideation. Maybe, um, maybe you have some creative ideas, or perhaps you work in a company as a product developer and the marketing team has come to you and said, here's an idea that we'd like to work on. You have gone through and scoped out a few different ideas, and you've done a little bit of feasibility and justification at this point. And, uh, from a, uh, over in our innovation class, we will have some uh, discussion about how do you use a variety of different metrics to do feasibility and justification. But for now, just assume that you have a great idea. You're gonna then walk through and think about the tasks that you need to do and define the outcomes and deliverables that you want to achieve from this project. You're gonna build out a team and then get some approval on this. So what on earth does this look like? Well, um, as you know, um, Back in 2012, I founded the Research and Innovation Group with the CFWI Innovation Centre. And since then, I've worked on several hundred uh, projects with clients all over the place. And even though I may not have as active a role as I used to, I still engage with um, dozens of clients every month and um, have lots of interactions with them about different projects. And it's a, it's a lot of fun. And so... Every time we had a project, we would fill out an initiation worksheet. And so let's walk through an example of that. All right, I've switched windows here. And this is the worksheet that we would use as a means of doing that initiation of a project. And remember, a project is a unique and um, singular um, idea that doesn't relate specifically to the day-to-day -day operations. It just happened that this was a collaborative project that aligned both with our course-based research. Um, a student came to us, his name was Seth Graham, and he came and said, hey, I'd really like to study um, how to make frozen desserts, and I'm really interested in making mochi ice cream. And I'm like, Seth, that's, that's a great capstone project. I encourage you to work on that. And it just happened that a good friend of mine, Vincent Tsai, who is the general manager of Gardena Foods, also happened to approach me at the same time and said, hey, Amy, do you think the research center would be willing to investigate how to make mochi ice cream? And I said, well, I've got the right student in place to help you work on this. So it was a course-based project that then converted over into a uh, funded research project in the Research and Innovation Center. So walking through the collaborative work plan, obviously we've got, what's the title? Well, it's making mochi ice cream. We've got the industry partner and that would be Vincent Tsai from Gardena Foods. We had, a, we had a broad start and end date and you can note, well, it was May 1st through August 15th. So it was a summer project funded through the, through the co-op student streams and then we jump into the product or the project challenge. How do you go about setting this project challenge? Well, in, in the case of research and innovation, um, and in a lot of different teams, you will take the time to listen to the stakeholders and find out what's involved with what they want to achieve. And you got to take a lot of time and ask a lot of questions, investigate further, um, 
do a bit of gap analysis to see what's out there in the marketplace. At this time, this was several years ago, and mochi ice cream was very much a niche product that was only available in um, select retailers. And Vince was interested because he had um, he had been commercializing a variety of different um, Asian-inspired ice cream through Gardena Foods and his uh, brand Fiesta Ice Cream. And so he had ube, yam ice cream, and halo halo ice cream, and mango, and ginger, red bean ice cream, the, the sorts of ice cream that you often might associate with eating out at Chinese or Japanese or Filipino restaurants. So these were products that he was then trying to position into more novelty confectionery items. And mochi ice cream seemed like a logical conclusion. It just happened that Vince also happened to own the equipment that was necessary. And that was a what's called a rion encruster. A rion is um, it's a machine that will extrude two layers on a product so you can have a filled dough. And he happened to get it for doing some filled dough products of other sorts. And he realized that if he were to transfer that rion into a refrigerated space, he could make uh, ice cream confectionery items in the rion as well as some of these other filled dough products. So he was capitalizing against um, equipment that he had and capitalizing against uh, product range that he had already in place. So he could fill it with his, let's say, red bean ice cream into a um, mochi type dough and have a frozen red bean mochi type uh, confectionery item. So the first phase, of, uh, what, I, what, I, what I wanna do is, um, just walk through this uh, project challenge statement, but uh, these files are available for you in Blackboard and you can take a look at them um, because your first assignment is going to be to fill out a project challenge and task list for an example product. And I may suggest that you use the, the project that you worked on last year with Baking 1445 and Keith Ellis if you need some initial inspiration, or you could do this for your anticipated capstone project that you're working on this um, this fall semester with Norm Myshock. But um, in essence, you've got a little, sh uh, a short paragraph structure outlining what the problem is. And then moving into the second page, it transitions from describing the problem into what are the key challenges and objectives. So in this case, the mochi dough needs to be mixed effectively to be machinable and run smoothly within the encrusting machine. So as I mentioned, it's using a rion encruster, which extrudes multiple layers into a multi-layer um, dessert or filled dough type product. So that was challenge number one, that we needed to have a dough that could be machinable at the right temperature and run smoothly without, without sticking or without uh, stopping and starting or cracking in the machine. Two, the mochi dough needed to be softer, smoother, and more elastic when forming and eating. The mochi dough needed to be less sweet. That was by instructions from the client. So the client, um, the client Vincent Tsai, was very adamant that he wanted the ice cream to be the sweetness component and not the mochi. And last but not least, the mochi dough needed to be chilled and frozen um, in a frozen state and then transited to another location to be made into a mochi ice cream. So... Uh, Vince was able to take his Rion and Cruster to a ice cream manufacturer because of the licensing requirement on dairy processing. He had been using it for filled dough in his um, non-dairy, non-meat, just a generic processing facility. And if he would do the sanitation and transfer that device in his own in his own company truck, he could take it over to the dairy facility and do it there. But he would still be making the cooked product in his dough facility. So he needed to be able to take the mochi dough across to another facility across town. So we lined up what the key objectives were. And this is where there now needs to be a bit of brainstorming on how you're going to accomplish this project. Quite often at this point, you would be sitting with a whiteboard or with a bunch of post-it notes and you'd think about what are the different steps that need to be done to accomplish these different objectives. Working down this form, we built out a team. Now we had the industry partner, we had me as the faculty leader, 
Uh, Rebecca Griffin was the research associate who was overseeing the project. We had research assistants who were uh, co-op students. And then the research project manager, uh, Christine Caniff, was the one who was making sure that all of the human resources and um, documentation outcomes were all in place to fulfill the different project requirements. From there we walked, uh, so I mentioned before, at this stage, quite often you'll sit and brainstorm with a whiteboard or with post-it notes, um, often just on uh, a draft piece of paper, but you need to go through systematically and think step by step, what do you need to do forecasting to accomplish the different outcomes that are out there? So first off, we decided that we wanted to do a site visit and visit Gardena Foods and find out what the current processes looked like, find out how the equipment functioned, learn a little bit more about the specifications on the equipment. And you'll notice that we, in very high level point form, just outlined what that task was, who was going to participate, and we gave a rough estimate on how long it would take. Now, we didn't think we were going to go for a week, we were going to go for one day. But at this stage, we're giving really, really high level estimates of how long it's going to take. The last piece of this is that we needed to put in some detailed outcomes. So this is what we expected to accomplish in a, at a really high level at this step of the process. You have to think through systematically, step by step, what's it going to take. So we went on a site visit to understand the unit operations available for fabrication and identify a proposed process flow for ingredients, equipment, and handling. From there, we needed to jump into exploratory and procurement. So we needed to replicate current mochi formulations based off of our understanding of mochi doughs and get a sense of how the mochi dough is functioning. Then we would set some experimental designs to um, enhance the functionality of that mochi dough. So uh, spend a couple weeks on reformulating the mochi dough to get the attributes down so that we had the right uh, functional requirements. So as we mentioned before, freeze thaw stability, uh, machinability, extensibility, and good sensory properties. So again, this is a really, really high level task list. We are not going down into granular detail yet. We're not going into setting all of the different methodology yet. We're really high level, but we're thinking systematically step by step, how are we going to get this project done? Last but not least, in number two, we're going to procure some ingredients. We're going to reach out to a lot of the different suppliers. Now, wait a second. You're going to say, well, there's project activities going on in week three and four. These are what are called parallel act activities that, for example, procuring ingredient, uh, ingredients. As you know, you might make a phone call out to a supplier and say, hey, supplier, I'd like to get some rice flour for making mochi dough. And the supplier will say, great, fantastic, we'll send you out some samples. And it may take a week or two before you get that. You don't sit and twiddle your thumbs during that time. You need to work on some sort of parallel activity to keep the project moving forward. So you'll note this is an example of a parallel activity, whereas in some cases, activities need to be sequential. We'll talk about that a little bit more in Gantt charting and PERT charting next week. But uh, Think about, think about the implications. Some activities can go on at the exact same time um, within the realm of a project, and they need to go on at the exact same time, and other elements of the project are dependent. So we can't go and start making formulations until we have procured the ingredients. So these are dependent activities. So we have to procure ingredients before we can produce formulations. So think that through. Are they parallel or are they dependent activities? We'll revisit that next week. So then we're starting into some production trials and we're going to compare the different ingredients against different um, analytical testing. In this case, we did some um, texture analysis on the frozen and uh, rethermed doughs. We did some internal sensory as well. We didn't on this project because it was a really fast project and because the client had a really strong um, understanding of what he wanted, we did internal sensory. We didn't do external panels. We did some um, industry comparisons. So um, we took the trial product out to the industry partner and got some feedback for additional refinement. Do you remember uh, in the previous uh, slideshow, we talked about iteration and Scrum Agile 
project management, we did need to go and get some feedback and then readdress the project plan. And so that was done at week five and six. And note, again, we've got some parallel activities where we've got a lot of formulation going on and a lot of refinement and feedback being solicited from the client to make sure that by the time we got to week seven and eight, we had a desirable product ready to go. Then at this point, we went to scale up and we sent our team members, Ezio and Lucas, out to do uh, an initial production run with Vince. And that was a lot of fun. They had um, the chance to go on site and do the manufacturing of that product. And it was pretty exciting. And then from there, as, you men as we mentioned before, in product... Uh, in project management, you need to close off that project. You don't just go and do that production run and hand off. You need to make sure that all the documentation on how things were done is absolutely clear and transferred over to the client to close off that project completely. So your task for this week is to think of a project, a simple project. I don't want it to be too, too long, but perhaps it could be the project that you worked on with um, Keith Ellis in Baking 1445. Perhaps it could be a forecasting of the project that you'd like to work on for your um, product development project with Norm this upcoming semester. Maybe it's something that you have been interested in working on at home. But uh, your, your assignment for this week is to write up the short product challenge, scope out what your summary objectives are in this challenge, I'm not going to worry about the team too much, but if you want to make up an imaginary dream team of who you'd like to work with, go for it. Maybe you always wanted to work with, uh, I don't know, maybe you always wanted to work with Savvy and Sunan, or you wanted to work with, uh, I don't know, pick someone. <laughs> Have some fun with that. I'm not going to over-scrutinize your team. Um, I realize that that's a bit hard to imagine, but the project work plan is where I really want to see a bit of thought process. You may be saying, well, wait a second, I have no idea how much time it will take. This is part of the learning process. And again, I'm not going to over scrutinize and say, well, it, you said it would take two weeks to procure your ingredients. But meanwhile, I know that you could get your ingredients in two days if you drove to Toronto. I'm not going to over scrutinize this. You'll notice how wide a range there is here in the, the time that's allowed. What I am going to look at is asking that question, are you putting the tasks in the right sequence? Are you thinking through with a good amount of detail, but at the same time, not too, too much detail? Because uh, these project work plans, this is initial project work plan, and it needs to then get approved by a manager or approved by the industry client in this case, to make sure that you've got the scope and the goals of this plan and the steps down and you have mutual agreement. You don't want to get into too much detail and then have them push back and say, well, wait a second, this isn't what we wanted. You want to uh, have just enough work effort to explain yourself, but not so much work effort that if all of a sudden they say, well, wait a second, we don't have the money anymore. Or wait a second, it's going to take that long and we, we, need, it, we need it yesterday. We, we can't wait 12 weeks. We can't wait that long. These happen all the time. And so honestly, you want to put in a good amount of effort and think logically, but at the same time, don't write a telephone book worth of uh, writing. You want it to be concise and clear. And so think a project through that maybe no more than 10 steps. Keep it nice and simple. You'll note this one was a 12 week project and we really grouped it into seven core activities. Use this as a model. At the end, you have a sign-off. So we had sign-off from the college's side and sign-off from the industry partner's side. And obviously, the filling out the phone number and fax and so on is uh, easy. But uh, when there's an agreement on the work plan, uh, there would be signatures across the board. And at that point, then a budget would be made up and a secondary agreement would be, would be signed. So you've got an empty work plan. And... I want you to have a little bit of fun with this, and this is your assignment for uh, for week one. We will take, uh, as, as normal, I like to give two weeks so that you've got some feedback. And I'm not a stickler on deadlines, I'm more a stickler on do you really, really understand what you're working on, and have you assimilated this knowledge for yourself? So take some time to think through, and um, inevitably I am looking for unique projects from everyone. So while you may be writing your uh, 
project from baking and you may have been working in a team, I'm expecting to see individual writing. Have fun with this. It's, it's, it's a skill that's going to take you a long way. And these work plans, the more you practice them, the easier they become. All right. Take care and we'll talk to you soon.